Hey everyone, welcome to the Micro Lab. I'm here to show you the dangers lurking in even visible pond water. I'm sure we've all have heard that pond water being stagnant uh, can contain dangerous eukaryotic organisms like amoebas and paramecium's. Uh, it can contain things like snails, which can harbor dangerous pathogens. It can also contain dangerous bacteria that will definitely give you diarrhea like E. coli and potentially salmonella. So today I'm going to walk you through uh, basically how the EPA recommends to boil and make these waters safe if you're ever out uh, and need drinking water available to you uh, but you're really scared about what's in the water. I managed to get some pond water from just down the street. Here it is here. Even just looking at it, it's relatively clear but as you can look very closely, there's tons of creepy crawlies in it. There's some snails and as well as some mosquito larvae. It's interesting in the city that I live in, in most of the uh, sort of park ponds. They put in some sort of chemical I can imagine that turns the water blue. I imagine the active action of this chemical is to reduce uh, mosquito larva populations. Um, but here we'll, we'll, I'll try to point out some of those mosquito larvas which are extra disgusting. But basically I'm going to walk you through visually uh, why you should sanitize water in, in uh, one basic way which is to boil it for up to one minute. I'm going to do it in increments of 20 seconds, be it 0 seconds, 20 seconds, so on until a minute, and hopefully show you uh, the levels of eukaryotic organisms like the larger swimmers, like the paramecium's, and, and other things like that, uh, and the microscope, and then B, I'm going to show you what can grow on these LB plates here. This would detect the dangerous bacteria that could be present. Step one here is to take a small sample from our pond water jar, and I elected to put it in a small Eppendorf tube. You can do this one of many ways. I elected not to shake up or agitate the pond water at all. I just took it directly from sort of the subsurface layer. Next, I added about 100 microliters of the raw pond water to this LB plate. I also added a small droplet to the microscope slide so we can look at it under the microscope. Next, I simply submerged the Eppendorf tube using some forceps into the boiling water. I took small droplets of water at 20 seconds, 40 seconds, and 60 seconds, plated around 100 microliters onto our LB plates, and added small droplets of water to microscope slides for microscopic visualization. Here is some footage from the raw pond water, pretty much straight out of the jar. Typically what I saw were these dark brown to light brown sedentary, what I presume to be organic materials, most likely just plant material that's just decaying there. Nestled within these dark brown uh, splotches could be something like parasitic egg worms nests uh, or mosquito eggs nests, something like that that uh, might be hiding within these masses. I'm not an expert on most of these large eukaryotic organisms, so I just tried to follow and find uh, anything that was really moving. These could be anything from uh, amoebas to paramecium's to daphnias to algaes. Um, but I just attempted to visualize anything that I could really find here. I managed to find a really nice example of what I believe to be an algal cluster. Uh, these clusters were really green and very well organized and put together, which leads me to think it's an algae of some sort. Here is the pond water after 60 seconds in the boiling water. As you can see, there really is nothing to see. I know I'm not moving the microscope field of view around at all because I think some of my footage got damaged, um, but really, right here is what I saw out of the whole microscope slide. Uh, there were really no large brown to dark brown debris. Uh, there were no moving objects or organisms. Um, at this point you would pretty much conclude that boiling the water works to destroy any and all organic organisms or structures within the pond water. Next onto our LB plates. These are just standard recipe LB plates that I put in my garage. My garage is around 85 to around 92 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think was perfect for this case. Uh, so for zero seconds here, you see a, a large smattering of bacteria of all different colony morphology types, some that are sort of dark yellow, opaque, uh, extremely small pin dot colonies. Uh, I think I counted around seven different colony morphologies here. Here's the plate after 20 seconds of boiling it in the water. It's very difficult to see here, but if you look towards sort of the bottom left of the plate, you can see individual colonies, but this is actually an entire film growing across the plate. Onto the plate after boiling the pond water for 40 seconds. Again, around 100 microliters were put on each plate, and I think this plate is the best example for how many different colony morphologies can be noted here. Uh, so on this plate, you see 
a bunch of different colony morphologies to a dark yellow to white to more opaque white that could be potentially fungi. I think that is potentially the most interesting. Here is the plate after boiling the pond water for 60 seconds. You can still see really great uh, bacterial colonies forming here and of all different morphologies. You can even see a really great example of a fungal colony forming in the top right up there. Of course, you would want to suspect that even after boiling water for 60 seconds, as the EPA says, you shouldn't see any bacterial growth at all on any of these plates. Uh, well, there might be many different causes about why we still see bacterial growth in this case. The goal of boiling water from natural sources, as of ponds and creeks and whatnot, is to just minimize the presence of pathogens. Boiling water is not going to kill everything in the water. That's why in microbiology labs, we typically use an autoclave, which introduces high pressure as well as steam. These two things work in tandem to drastically reduce uh, the presence of bacteria. There are many examples of bacteria who actually prefer to live in environments where high pressure and high heat are available. Places like Yellowstone or places like the bottom of the ocean near the thermal vents. These are places with high heat and again high pressure and these organisms actually prefer that over normal environments, say the temperature of your body or the temperature of a natural pond that might hover between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyways, I think a safe conclusion here is that boiling water for 60 seconds is to reduce the level of harmful pathogens present in the water. It's not going to kill everything in the water, as we still saw there was bacteria and fungi even left after boiling the water for 60 seconds. Anyways, I think that's about it for this video. I had a really fun time making it. I think the goal of this content in this channel is to bring the audience a really nice view into microbiology and get some people interested. I have a lot of different things planned, not only in microbiology, but in just different projects. Um, so if you want, feel free to drop a sub, comment on anything, um, and have a really great, awesome rest of your day.